Hello once again, you're back with a single malt review, and in keeping with our last Kettle Homan review, we're staying in Isla. Yes we are, and staying with the um, no-age statement whiskey, mm. but aside from that, things are going to diverge mightily. This is Finn Lagan, which we have not... Um, we have not uh, taken a crack at before, but Finn Lagan, as um, many people are probably familiar, is a bit of an Isla institution. Oh, okay. um, always a good way of telling your whiskey noobs you. apart. If they, um, there's always sort of one in twenty Isla fans that you ask, "What's their favourite distillery?" And it's like, "Oh, Finn Lagan, um, it's the best there is." Not actually a distillery; it's actually a company, but nonetheless, they do produce a single Isla malt, but exactly which one it is, is a subject of great, great contention mm. and an enduring mystery. I thought for sure, because Finlagen is not a new, it's not a new thing on the blog. It's been around for ages and allegedly it's always been the same single malt. So I thought if I did enough digging on enough forums, I would find out where it comes from, but apparently not. People have not been able to find out the exact distillery mm. it comes from. And um, so that's really quite beguiling. I thought I'd be able to try by um, find out by tasting it as well. But as with a lot of young Isla, it's quite difficult to tease out exactly where it comes from. Mm. You get a you get a thought in your mind. And it's like, well, that's that's clearly this whiskey. And you try it again the next day, and then you think, oh no, mm. now I'm tasting something else. It's maddeningly difficult, but that's probably part of the fun, really. But in either way, this is Kiloman, but this is their no age statement cask. Kiloman. <laughs> formerly, formerly Kiloman, that's the name we were doing before. Yes. Never mind. This is Finn Lagan. Mm. Thank you for catching me on that one. Um, and this is their No Age Statement Cask Strength version. Mm. Um, whether it is coloured or chill filtered, I don't know. See, probably uh, not when you're, what, 58%? You 58%, need, you certainly don't need, don't need to chill add filtration. Yeah. Um, as for colour, it's mm. pretty pale, but I reckon there's probably a smidge put in there because mm. it's still darker than I would expect for so, fairly, yeah. fairly young for whiskey. For know, there could be some older whiskey added too, so... There could be, mm. there could be. 58%, that speaks to me of roughly, you know... Eight years old, eight to mm. ten, I guess, is in there. Uh, they do do age statements, and I hear pretty positive feedback from them, although I'm not particularly particularly familiar. So, mm. we will um, dig into this one and see exactly what we think yeah. might be going on. So, we know we operate out of Finlagen Castle, but what do we know about the company itself? Well, they... Um, you, you, you've caught me on this one because mm -hmm. I haven't actually looked them up oh. specifically. They've always operated under Finlagen. They've always produced a Isla single malt under mm. the label of Finlagen. Uh, they attest that it's always been the same single malt oh. because the first theory was, well, it's so hard to tell because they just go with what's on the market mm. and get what's cheap. And so they, they at least responded to that with, no, 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 they, um, they've always been the same one. And they've been making Finlagen for a very long time, so it could be quite an old contract, which could mean it could be from somewhere quite uh -huh. unlikely. Um, if you've got a very, very old recurring contract, then um, it's possible, possible that you could have um, Lagavulin or Ardbeg uh -huh. or something in there that would, uh, in the modern times, be very, very difficult to afford. Oh. Our um, regular viewers include some very well-informed whiskey yes, sleuths. Yes, they do. So, so any, if anyone's who's... got any ideas, yeah. um, sort of play along with us here, hmm. and we'll see. We'll see what um, what we can find out. But as far as I know, no one can say for certain because hmm. there's just not that hard info. Short of me sort of sneaking around Isla um, and trying to find a receipt uh, from where this came from, but we just we don't have the hard hmm. facts. So let the conjecture begin. Well, that's a very mild nose. Yeah. Compared to the Kilim Makia Bay we tried last time, this is a really mild... Considering as well, this is 58%. Yeah. Um, well, it smells lightly mm. peated. Uh, you might change your mind once you oh, taste it. Oh, for sure. It, I mean, but... that's a, compared to the Makia Bay, this oh, is yeah, a yeah. very in terms light of, nose. In terms of peat that it mm. gives away, this is quite quite light. Although, yeah. that's um, I think the strength is working against its mm. peatiness there because they're very, very, very strong alcohol. This tends to hide mm. the peat. Either it's not particularly solvent in the alcohol, it's more mm. of a water-soluble compound, I'm not sure. But There is a it's... mild menthol-esque burn on the sinuses mm. from that 58% harshness, but... But what it, what, it does, um, what it does bring mm. is... 
as opposed to the Kleinman, it's quite a warm, rounded PT whiskey. It's, yeah. It's kind of a, a kelpy, um, it's maritime, but kind of yeah. gently vegetative peat. It's not kelpie, a, kelpie but, is a good one. Mm. Um, the, the bottle suggests um, smoky bacon, mm. and I, I agree with that one. There's quite an animal component to yes, this one. Yes, it's like Manuka smoked bacon, right? Mm. Mm. And it's very, very much smoke. It's an mm. aromatic smoke, whereas the Kelomen was quite a coaly char. Mm. This one is significantly more savoury and significantly more sort of ethereal so at any rate we'll mm. we'll try it at full strength and see what yeah. see how it speaks to us mm. and it's by no means undrinkable at the Ooh. pretty stonking 58 yeah. percent it's pretty smooth whiskey considering mm. yeah that peatiness is so subdued compared to the younger whiskeys i'm convinced mm. there is some old spirit in here where that oh there, there could well mellow. there could well be mm. some um there could even be some unpeated spirit in yeah. here because um just because it's island doesn't mean it's um 100 peated whiskey mm. there's plenty of distilleries which produce unpeated yeah. make so it could be built out of any number of parts mm. that is impressively drinkable at full undiluted strength there's a harsh mm. uh prickling across the tongue but beyond that it's um, the strength kind of comes out, you know, mid to the back of the palate, but up front it's really quite warm, sweet, and distinctly, distinctly mm. savoury. I actually quite like it at full strength. Yeah, there are some lovely notes of uh, wood smoke and roasted meat. Mm. But that said, um, it's a bit easier to approach mm. with a wee drabby of water. Mm. Yeah, some lovely hints of wood smoked bacon and maybe roast venison. Any speculations as yet as to where it comes from? I honestly couldn't say. Mm. I've had um, a number of good Isla whiskies. I could, if it was tasting like an Ardbeg or a Kiloman or a Kalila, I could speculate in those directions. But it's simply not evocative enough of those yeah. distilleries for me to My really pin it down. My first thought was Kalila because mm. Kalila has got that. It's sort of it's got the bacon, it's got that mm. savoury smoke, but it doesn't have any of the citrus. It just the citrusy nature is not there, and that's such an intrinsic component mm. of Kalila. I'm not getting the grubby jute that I normally get from Kalila. Mm. Kalila has a very distinctly oily, hessian quality to it, and I'm not getting that. So, hey, I could be wrong. This could be Kalila all the way, and I just don't know. But that's fine. Well, well that's not the impression I'm getting right now from tasting this. Myself, I have what I have been able to do is fairly confidently eliminate some distilleries. Mm. The shortlist I have given myself for this one, and I could still be completely wrong, I think it is either, either Collila, Lafroig, Ardbeg, or Lagavulin. I think those mm. are the pool of candidates that we're dealing with, both because of the flavor profile and mm. the availability of those whiskies. Obviously, some of those are massively more available than mm. others. Lafroy and Colila are quite easy to get whiskey off. They often show up in independence, so they're clearly fairly free with letting their whiskey go to outsiders. Lagavulin and Ardbeg are manifestly not, which makes them a bit less likely. However, like I said, Finlagen has been around for a long time, and if they set up a contract in ages past when... Ardbeg and Lagavulin didn't have quite the ooh, quite the fashion and dominance in the premium category that they do today. They might have teed something up, which meant they had a supply ongoing, hmm. and they may be benefiting from that in the um, in the modern age. However, I don't really know if that's a Lagavulin or a Lafroig. Well, sorry, Lafroig especially. If that's Lafroig, it's hiding the fact very well. Mm. Lagavulin and possibly. I need to try more of your range to speculate yeah. further. Uh, Lafroig, Lef I'm. Mm. I think I'm least likely yeah. that it's Lafroig because it just doesn't. Lafroig has that massive, massive seaweed tang mm. on it, which this one it has in a little bit, but no great abundance. Mm. And my experience with Lafroig is that it has that at almost any age. Yeah. Um, so the fact that it's not here in spades probably makes me cross mm. out Lefroy. Lefroy almost comes with an, kind of an iodine chaser, and that's just yeah. not happening here. Um, like Ardbeg, a hmm. yeah, Ard Ardbeg, I think it's not quite peat enough. No, Ardbeg, Ardbeg just, just shovel on the peat, and that is mm. the overwhelming impression. That's Again, it's subdued enough here. This is um, impressively sweet, and um, well, 
light on the smoke once it's had some water yeah. added. Which narrows us down to Kolila or Lagavulin. Hmm. Um, the knee-jerk reaction would be, well, this is Kolila because it doesn't have any of the hallmarks of Lagavulin. Hmm. But then you have to think about what we know about Lagavulin, which is actually a fairly narrow band. Lagavulin, outside of its unusual releases, exists hmm. in a fairly fairly archetypical stretch. It's the 16-year-old, sherry-dominant, classic malts version. And though that's undergone a few changes, in fact, I think it's gotten significantly worse in recent years, hmm. they brought it down to 43% and changed it quite a bit. Um, it's not the whiskey it once was. What we don't get to taste is young Lagavulin. Hmm. Almost no one does, because it just doesn't appear. Um, it's almost never independently bottled. They're very, very protective of the brand, and they don't release younger age statements unless unless something happens like their 200th birthday. Hmm. Um, and I was at such a 200th birthday tasting earlier this year, and there they had some eight-year-old whiskey, hmm. which was by far the youngest Lagavulin I've ever been able to tell. And there was a few... Not a huge amount, but a few similarities with this whiskey, which makes me just a little bit hmm. suspect that maybe, maybe we're dealing with Lager Volum here. Um, that, sadly, is the most difficult to confirm because there's hmm. no there's no younger Lager Volum. Though they do a 12-year-old now, that's still, I think, a little too old um, and too sherry-influenced hmm. um, to compare it I to I feel this. there's a lot of bourbon influence here. Quite a lot, even. I, I think probably mm. at least dominantly, if not exclusively, bourbon. Mm. So it's almost like trying to feed someone a bourbon matured Glendronic and get them to guess it. That's I'd something say not, not something exclusively else. bourbon. I've had old um, exclusively bourbon Isla mm. whiskey and very young exclusively bourbon Isla whiskey. This has something extra. I would, I'm not going to like stake anything on it, but I'm convinced there's probably a variety of casks uh, at play in here. Mm. But speculation aside, what do we know, and is how much are we enjoying this? What score well, do you give it? I, I really, I quite like it. It's mm. very, very robust. It's very, very affordable, which always, um, it always tastes a wee bit better to me when it's terribly affordable. <laughs> um, personal failing of mine. I think this one's an 87. It's mm. really, really good, um, really, really good cask strength. Fairly, fairly unmodified. You can see the lack of at least chill filtration in mm. the glass. Uh, Isla whiskey. What do you think? And normally, cask strength and Isla in combination create something which makes me slightly you know, afraid. It's going to be an assault on the senses, a sandpapering uh, of the tongue. But in this case, it's drinkable, it's approachable, even at its full undiluted strength. That earns an 88 from me. Mm -hmm. It's a very good example of the style. It's full of mystery and layers, as we've discussed at length. Um, so, yeah, it's a good, intriguing, beguiling Isla dram. Doesn't skimp on the peat, but doesn't just bombard you in the face with it either. Yeah. No, I, I think it's... Uh, I recommend this to mm. almost anyone that wanted an affordable Isla whiskey. It's a really, really good stuff, um, considering the price you can conceivably pay for similar. Um, as for predictions, please, um, we could almost do a sort of a, a uh, opinion poll mm. in the comments below. Uh, my, my shot in the dark, maybe not completely in the dark, because it was an educated guess, my shot in the poorly lit room is Lagavulin, mm. young Lagavulin. So um, if you agree, please let me know or not. And um, we will have something, I think, uh, markedly different and more identifiable coming up next. Possibly even bourbon. Slander. Slander.